Romans. All right, today I want to share on the subject of um, the concept of uh, um, the open heavens. In other words, a Christian living under a open heaven. So a person could live either under a closed heavens, a partially open heavens, right, or full open heavens. And when we say partial, it can be in different degrees. And this will be reflected in the type of experiences that we have in our own personal life and in our own personal space. We said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2, 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 2, Paul here says, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. And this he was referring to himself. Whether in body I cannot tell or whether out of body I cannot tell, God knoweth. And then he said, such an one caught up to the third heaven. I have said if uh, the term third heaven is used, then it implies something. For if I say that there is my third car or my third house, then what that means automatically is that I have, I have, all right, two previous cars or houses, or there is in existence the first and the second, if I use the term thought or the word thought. So it implies that there are at least three heavens. In other words, the third heaven is referring to here is that geographical place that we call heaven that when people die, they say, we say go to heaven, which means a place that is paved, the streets are paved with gold. And then, all right, the first heaven will be the one God created in the beginning when he says, and God created the heaven and the earth. And that's the stars, the galaxies, everything that we see. Uh, that's how it's uh, defined in theological circles. But then the second heaven is now, all right, the delicate space. And it's where it says, all right, we are seated together with Christ in heavenly places. And it talks about prince of the power of the air. It talks about, all right, heavenly places there. And that's the realm of the spirit. And the big revelation is, and we saw from the book of Daniel, and when the Bible says there was war in the heavens, they're talking about the heavenly places. And it is that when prayer is offered up unto God, God lives in heaven. He hears and answers the prayer. And every time God answers a prayer of a person, he sends forth an angel or angels to execute the answer to the prayer. So an angel or angels are sent forth. So when God wants to do anything in this physical dimension, he sends forth angels to go and carry out the answer to that prayer. Now, those angels are released from heaven and they come into the physical space to cause things to happen. But they have to pass through what is called the heavenly places, which is the realm of the spirit, in getting to us right here. And that is where, all right, Satan now can withhold, and that's where spiritual warfare occurs. For the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh nor against blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, all right, spiritual wickedness in high places. So it's in those spaces there. And we see that when Daniel offered up his prayer, the Bible tells us in Daniel chapter 9, it says that, and verse, all right, 3. And I set my face unto the Lord God, 
to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. And after he had offered up the prayer, the Bible tells us, right in verse 17, Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and the supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary, that is desolate for the Lord's sake. And the scripture says in verse 20, And while I was speaking and praying, and confessing my sin and the sins of the people, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God in the holy mountain of my God, while I was yet speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, caused to, swift, caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And what did the angel say? And informed me and talked with me and said, O oh Daniel, I am come to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplication. He says, at the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment, he said this, went forth. All right? And I am come to show thee the matter. Now, if we go to chapter 10, and behold, the hand touched me while I was, which set me upon my knees and the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, a, greatly, a man greatly beloved, Understand the words that I speak on thee, stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word, I stood trembling. Then he said unto me, Fear not to Daniel, from the first day thou did set thy hand, thy heart to understand, and chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I came for that I have come for thy words. It says, From the first day that thou did set your heart. But, he said in verse 13, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thee? So, when he offered up the prayer, it took 21 days for him to get the results, but it wasn't 21 days of God, all right, deciding or God not responding to his prayer. 21 days where the prince of Persia, which was a demonic spirit in charge of that region, didn't want Daniel to have that information or skill all right, concerning what was prayed about, so he withheld the angel for 21 days there. And so Gabriel had to come. And so when you offer prayer unto God, an angel is released, but that angel there can be withheld. And so it tells us that put on the whole armor of God. Now, you don't put on the whole armor of God to go and Fight God in prayer, but what you are doing in prayer, therefore, is to open up that space. And that's where the spiritual skill comes in, so that the heavens, and that's the term, are opened up. So that the angels, therefore, have free access into your life and your space. And when they have that access into your space, then you are going to start seeing in your own life, all right, manifestations there of angelic activity, which are answers to your prayers and other things. So we see Jesus talking about this in John chapter 1 and from verse 45. John chapter 1 from verse 45. Philip found that Nathaniel and said unto him, We are found of whom? Of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Philip said unto him, Come and see. 
All right? Now, this is very important. It says, can any good thing come out of Nazareth, which means nobody had emerged from that particular town or that geographical area that was doing anything significant. And it is because there was a territorial spirit, so to speak, in that area that kept every single person at bay. Now, the next verse tells us, Next verse. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. That's no deception. And Nathaniel said, When knowest thou me? Which means there is word of knowledge, supernatural information. Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, he said, I saw thee. And then Nathaniel said, Rabbi, thou art the son of God, thou art king of Israel. And Jesus said, Because I said unto you, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou me? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he saith unto him, Verily I say unto you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and angels of God descending and ascending upon the Son of Man. In other words, you are going to say greater things than this because the heaven will be open and the angels of God will ascend and descend on the Son of Man. Now, the next verse, which was John chapter 2, verse 1, Nathaniel began to see those things Jesus was talking about because there was a feast, a marriage feast, in Canaan, Galilee, and that was where... Jesus now began to do his miracles by changing water into wine. So the heavens can be closed or the heavens can be opened. All right? And that's why, and there are things that govern that. That's why you would see in Isaiah chapter 58, that in Isaiah chapter 58, that some folks got together, they had prayed of 59, uh, 58, and it says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice, verse 1, all right, like a trumpet, show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, delight to know my way as a nation that did righteousness. And they said in verse 3, Wherefore have we fasted, and thou seest not? Behold, we have afflicted our soul, and you take no knowledge. And he said, the reason is that in the days of your fast, all right, you are not fasting as I want. There are certain things going on. And he told him in verse 7, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? Bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. And then verse 8 says, if you are doing these things, then shall thy light break forth as morning. Thy health shall spring forth speedily. Thy righteousness shall go before thee. The Lord shall be your rear guard. Thou shalt call, and instantly you will have me answer, which means that you will have instant answers to prayer. Thou shalt cry, and I shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and the speaking words of vanity. So there are things that do govern this right, upon the earth, which is the opening up. That's why Malachi, he says, prove me if I will not open the windows of heaven. So there, it's like, it tells us there are windows right there in heaven that can be opened up, and there are windows that can be closed. And when the window is opened up in heaven, what literally happens in our lives when it's fully opened is that every single thing that we think, desire, pray about, we experience an exceeding measure of those things. We don't have room to contain what God himself is pouring out into our lives. If the heavens are closed, then what's going to happen is you just will not have any trace of any manifestation of God there. The lines don't fall into pleasant places. You are wondering, all right, what is going on? Nothing seems to be working the way it says in the word of God. 
it's because in the life of that particular person, the heaven remains closed over that person because they are not, all right, they are not even aware in the first place as to how the heavens, all right, gets opened up over the life of an individual, the things that they are supposed to do on this earth because we are the ones that trigger it, all right? It is the activities that you do on this earth that triggers whether there will be an open heaven over your life or whether there will be a closed heaven, all right? And the salvation of Jesus Christ to us wasn't just to give us a blank check, which means that now that you are born again, all right, you can live anyhow you want to live. It's a blank check. I've done everything for you. What he did for us is when he shed his blood, he says, now, the seals are opened up now. You have an advantage over every single person on the surface of this earth. <coughs> All right, when they came to me, Jesus, and said, Rabbi, no man can do these things that you do except God be with him. He said, except you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom. Now you can see it when you're born again. In other words, you can understand. It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So that with that understanding, you can now put certain things into practice. All right, you understand the laws of the spirit. You know how things function. Uh, you can repeat things. You can regulate things. All right, you can cause things to happen. You can work miracles right there. You can pick up things ahead of time and avert disaster. You are now in that position. But it's not that, you know, I would just sit down and no matter, all right, God has been covered. Then why will he write in the scripture, put on the whole armor of God for rest not against flesh and blood? Why would he write in all of that, all right? Now, so there is that teaching and doctrine, all right, that a lot of times Christians like, and you know, when you say it, people say, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm born again by blah, 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 the heavens over me are open, no, no, no devil can shut any heaven over me, it's open, I would say, yeah, yeah, but it puts people to sleep. They don't do what they are supposed to do. I mean, if it's automatic, then why would the father, the father himself, after Jesus brought his blood and says, after he purged that sin, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. And he says, sit until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Why would the father be telling Jesus immediately after he shed his blood that sit here until I make thine enemies, which means that there are certain things we now have the right to deal with and I can on behalf of humanity deal with these particular things because you have shed your blood there. So what happens is people believe that inside their heart and say that they don't do anything. And when they don't do anything, then what happens is nothing shows up within their life. And then there's no difference there. I mean, let me show this here about Jesus in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16. Now, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water. Now, look, look at what he says here. And lo, the heavens were opened unto who? Him. Not to everybody. Now, everybody was getting baptized, but everything was closed. It was only to Jesus there that there was an open heaven unto him. In other words, the heavens opened up. And that's how he got filled there, all right, with the Holy Ghost. So when Jesus told his disciples, Tyree, what he was literally telling them is spend time doing some things to open the thing. All right? He says, tarry until you endure. Spend time doing certain things to open this thing over the life of that person. Or else what you're going to have is you're going to have frustration. In other words, people are going to see things in the word of God. They're going to pray for things. All right? But everything will be hindered. And people will wonder, oh, why? What did God do to me? Why did God not allow this? Why God? And it's all about angelic activities right on the earth. All right? Or demonic activity. I've said this before. If a person prays for a job, all right? And God says, all right, that's the job we want that person to have. This, all right, is this individual, the angel comes forth and says, we have to make a connection between this person and that person, all right, and they have to move you as a person to act in a certain way so that there can be a coincidence with the other person there who, <coughs> who is to accept them, and he looks at the connection and says, all right, this person will be at this particular place at this particular point in time. Let's move this person, all right, to do this. So the boss of this person, or something happens, and that connection has to be made in order, all right, for the answer to that prayer to be made manifest. Now, if, and you'll be waiting and say what's going on. So actually, it is totally wrong to say I've prayed about something and just close your book and be waiting. 
Do you see how silly it is? All right? It means that what you have done is, that's why Daniel was there for 21 days. That's why it talks about be patient in prayer. In other words, when you have chosen that this is the project that we are believing for here, you stay with it. Because what's going to happen is exactly what happened with Moses and Joshua. Moses put up his hand and Joshua was advancing and he went tired and he stopped and every part. So you can't be praying. The angelic beings are moving and then you stop praying over that thing and all angels stop. Now, what you're going to have is going to be this. When you finally pray that thing through, if you hold a conversation with the people that were involved, they will tell you that that wasn't the first time your name came to their mind. Some can even say that, why I just keep forgetting? Do you know how many people, listen to this, do you know how many people have decided to help you that didn't complete? Just the amount of people you two have decided to help that you haven't finished. Said, I'm going to give this person. And it's like the thing was seized from your mind. And then you see the person and say, oh my goodness. I've always wanted to come. You know what happened? That was an answer to a prayer of that person. All right? While the thought, I'm just trying to show you how it happens. The thought came into the heart of that person. Or your heart to make the connection. Uh, so then just comes here and just, I mean, you can do this in church. I've done this before many years ago. I said, listen, one day I was preaching, I said, how many of you here, I told the people then, when I was, we just got on television for some years, how many of you saw me on television, and after you listened to me, said, I'm coming to this church, but it took you two years to come? They started putting up their hand. I said, what's going on into you? All right? So you could even have woken up one morning and said, I'm going there now. I'm going there now. And they just don't execute it. Or somebody can be in a place and, and can't leave his father and mother. Do you get what I'm saying? When I say father and mother, I'm not saying it right now. When Jesus said, if you cannot leave your father and follow me. In other words, you have emotional ties that hold you down in a position that is wrong for you. Spiritual power has to be released into you to be able to make that decision. If that power is not sufficient, you remain in what you're doing. It's not God's fault. And what God does is that God will put a burden on the person praying. While they're praying, he will say this prayer is not complete. Do you, are you following what I'm saying here? And you are praying and you know that you haven't gotten to that place. But you too yawn. Do you get what I'm saying here? I, I'm saying, well, I'm tired a bit now. Or, in fact, you are pushing towards it. And then it tells you of a series that is supposed to come at 8, 8, 8 p.m. That it's time for you to go and watch it. Which has nothing to do with your destiny. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying here? Or you are in that project there. And I'm telling you this. And you are pushing and pushing. And there's a birthday party. That whether you go or not, the birthday party will hold. They don't need to see you. But you think you are so important that you have to be at that birthday party. But you know what? Only you can complete this prayer you are doing. People can attend that birthday party without you. And they won't notice you around. Until they saw you. Then you thought that ah, it was you that made it happen. Yet, you have left your duty in the realm of the spirit. Do you get what I'm saying here? And allow that demon to roam more than it could and restrict angelic activities. So anytime the Holy Spirit just places something on your heart while you are in the place of prayer and tells you this thing is not over, it is not yet over. It's not that God hasn't heard your prayer. He's telling you that you haven't dislodged. So you can come around that person. Do you get what I'm saying here? I mean, I told the person that told me to go and preach in Barbados. They told me, they said, you passed us three times. 
who are struggling, whether the Holy Spirit said, say hello to him. He said, we don't know how he will respond. Say hello to him. That last time will have been the last time I'll have gone. And you would have had a Barbados connection that you will miss. You won't even have known about it. Do you get what I'm saying? So some people may have the answer to your prayer, but they are shy, naturally. I mean, you don't know people are shy. <laughs> Some of you are praying for your husband, and the husband is right for you, but the guy is shy. And he looks at you every day in church, and he goes, and he looks at you, and goes, and, and I say, God, where are you? Ah, but God. <laughs> and then when he finally comes, just ask him. When, you know, the angel said, from the first day, the commandment came. <laughs> ask from when? Well, it took me about um, 19, 19 months. <laughs> I mean, there's a scripture that Paul said. Let me, let me just put it up here. Paul said um, somewhere. Let me just pull it, pull it out. He said, um, pray for me, sorry, that I may be restored. He, he actually put the word restored to you sooner. In other words, he was talking about, all right, all right, I beseech you that you rather do this, that I may be restored, all right, which means come there, to you the what? Sooner. In other words, you can hasten it. You can slow it down. So we begin to understand that this thing is not, that is God who is making decisions. Do you get what I'm saying here? It is understanding how, all right, activities. For example, and I'm going to show this here. For example, let me give this example here. You know when Cornelius prayed? Now, the heavens opened over him because of certain things. The Bible says, when the angel came, it says, your prayer and your what? Arms have come as a memorial unto God. Now, helping the poor is one of the major things that keeps gives you open heavens. And that's what he was saying in Isaiah. We'll get into it, 58. All right? Now, but listen to what happened here. When the heavens were open and the angel came, the angel told him, send for one, Simon, all right, a Joppa, and he shall tell thee words by which thou shalt be what? Saved. Do you get what I'm saying here? Okay. You see how powerful this answer is? You see how powerful it is. He lodged with one Simon a tada, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Now, go on to verse 10. All right, or from verse 9. So let's see what was happening with Peter. And on the morrow they went on their journey and drew near the city. So he sent people to go there. Now, please understand this. God, please hear what I'm saying. God will never send you to talk to somebody about something he has told you that person should do on your behalf without telling that person to. So please, there's nothing like God told me. You might be correct to listen to that God told me I'm to marry this person. But God has to tell the person to. Do you get what I'm saying? If God doesn't tell that person and you go and t now you, Go now, now listen. I'm not even talking man to woman. She man can talk to, her and then the woman can. But if it's a woman, because women say, I, I, God told me, I've sent it to her, God told me that's my husband. They maybe have been correct. But if you go and tell the person before God tells that person, then you start saying things that you have not heard from God. You have scattered because you are now in authority over the man. If the person marries you, that's how you're going to be doing in the house without knowing because you have established from the point of entry that I was the one that had God before you had God. In other words, you have taken the initiative to be the leader of that house. So when you tell a man that kind of thing, you're telling him, but God told me, what you're telling that man is, you are going to be following me in this house. So the man will restrain himself from if he had anything after that. Except you leave the man to be going free by himself, and one day he has a Paul encounter. 